Hello. This is a Facebook Live. <laughs> um, <laughs> hello, welcome to a special episode of Academy. Yeah, special. It, it's, um, it, I mean, it was very shiny and sparkly, so I like that. The intro was, I, I definitely noticed some gold there, I think. Or am I just imagining it? <laughs> <laughs> I worked hard on that. Um, but it was good. It was good. It was really good. Um, we're going to talk today about Autistic August um, and why it's better than April Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, so, Sire, I believe Autistic August was your thing, but I just realized before we get into that, we should probably do visual descriptions of ourselves. Um, my brain is not braining in this heat. Um, and you know it's hot because <laughs> autistic people are talking about the weather. Um, I know it's red this morning, now I'm toast. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, should we go... Uh, okay, I, uh, I'm David. I am a white male in his 30s of Mediterranean descent. I have glasses, a lip piercing, a beard and a shaved head, and I'm wearing a black sleeveless T-shirt in a room that people keep telling me looks like a prison, but how many prisons have wonderful bookcases like this, um, which I may or may not have built myself? Um, <clears throat> ben, um, do you want to describe yourself? I think... Ben's described himself as a sexy freaking potato at the end. Uh, the, oh, yes, I see. Yes, Ben says that he's a sexy freaking potato. Uh, Bobby? Um, so I'm Bobby Elman. <clears throat> I'm um, a parent and professional. Um, I'm a very white woman with sort of black glasses and red raspberry hair. I'm wearing a black T-shirt um, in my bedroom, actually. <laughs> With another bookcase also behind me. Okay. Um, oh, there he is. Sai, do you want to describe yourself? I'm a very oozing piece of toast. Very good. Specific Victoria. Um, White, middle-aged person with very grey hair, increasingly grey hair, actually. Wearing glasses, um, navy blue top, um, sat on a pale pink sofa. Very good. Very and Rachel? Hi, yeah. Um, I'm a white person with very short blue hair. Um, got a Disney Pixar t-shirt on, which is called like Buzz Lightyear. Um, Adam's life. Uh, all that fun stuff on it. Um, uh, yeah, I've got um, a lip piercing. Um, my background is shamelessly promoting my consultancy business. <laughs> um, and it's, it's got rainbows and it's got the infinity symbol on it with my logo on top. And uh, there is also a cat. So, <laughs> Gunnar, would you like to describe yourself? Um, Gunna is a nine-year-old sphinx, so a bald cat, who likes announcing himself whenever I haven't forbid talk to anybody else, I should be paying attention to him. That's G. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, back to the, the topic of the live. Autistic August. We're feeling good about it, right? Um, Sai, do you want to talk a bit about where, why, why Autistic August? Why, wh where did it come from? Um, I'm not allowed to swear, am I? Because <clears throat> I bloody well hate Autistic April, or Autism April, Autism Month, Autism Aware Awareness Month, whatever the hell you want to call it. Mm. I just hate it. I don't understand why we haven't got something of our own. We have everything else of our own. We have our autistic community. We have the infinity symbol. We have gold or red even. But we still have Autism Awareness Month in April. 
It's not for us, it was never by us. In August begins with AU, just makes sense. It does, it does. And uh, I couldn't agree more, to be honest. Uh, I don't know about everyone else, but I, I get a little sick of the sort of rhetoric you see around April. Um, <clears throat> you know, especially when you get organisations that suddenly for one month of every year seem to care about autistic people, but in a really weird way. And then as soon as April's over, it's like, we cease existing. Um, so... I would say it goes further than that, though, and a lot of autistic people that I know certainly kind of distance themselves from social media around that time. Because you also find a lot of, like, autistic people being showcased on the internet uh, in very compromised positions and in videos, uh, you know, like, horrible narratives, like, uh, autism one today, um, and it's, you know, degrading images of people online that probably didn't consent to having that on their, online and people looking at it going, oh, it must be so hard, um, yeah. and things like that. And I think a lot of autistic people generally just kind of go, I'd rather just get, give a for a wide berth <laughs> and have nothing to do with it. Absolutely. It's, 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 it's inspiration porn at that during that month that makes me insane. That's exactly what it is. It's, it's constantly like, you know, like you said, autism one. And let's be honest. I mean, I don't know too much, but I don't even think April was April was created by an autism charity, wasn't it? Like it was yeah. back, and if I'm not mistaken, it was first in the states and sort of carried over. I mean, I, I could be totally wrong. I don't know the ins and outs, but I do know that we didn't actually decide that. <laughs> there was nothing. There was no autistic involvement in that. Otherwise, it wouldn't be freaking awareness. Like we went a little bit more than that. Am I wrong? No, I often think it sort of is it significant that it's at the start of the sort of new financial year as well. But I could be very, very pessimistic, but I don't think I am because most of it seems to be about making money. Exactly. And very little, very little of that money actually ever sort of reaches the autistic community. Because when you look at the billions over the years that has been generated from these charities and the things that you could do with that and the difference you could make, mm. and we're in the same position. Charities, but not a lot it's of the business. money actually gets to the community. No. Well, we know where it's going. It's going on the CIO, CEOs. Mm. Yeah. It doesn't actually... the people that run the actual charities. Exactly. Yeah. And those charities have nothing to do with us anyway. Yeah, and let's um, let's not forget that those of us who do advocacy work like this, you know, we're doing stuff like this all year anyway. But during April, it's like it's expected of us. Like, like if you're not advocating really hard all throughout April and burning yourself out, then suddenly you're not doing what you're supposed to do, which I think rubs up against my demand avoidance quite badly anyway. Um, David, let's even talk about that though. Even if you do, even if you put your time and energy and effort into advocating during this month, let's be honest, what do you get? <laughs> what happens? <laughs> yeah. You get bandwagoned, you get jumped on, you get accused of, you don't represent my child. <laughs> you know, it's a war and it's like, you're asking people to go into a firing line that they may not have the energy or the mental, mental health to deal with, quite frankly. Um, and so even if they did all of that stuff, what are they likely to receive <laughs> in return, you know? And we've seen it. We see it every April, you know, just people going, you know, let's let's drop the uh, um, awareness and let's go for acceptance. And people being like, well, how can you accept this? And how can you accept my son having meltdowns 13 times a day? And it's like, we try and educate. We try and um, come from a neutral standpoint and we jump down, you know, you, well, you're using the wrong tone. And it's like, you know, it's actually being attacked for being autistic in autistic advocating. It, it's, it's nuts. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know what? What Ben says, tokenism. You know, um, the the whole thing is um, it's completely tokenistic, isn't it? You know, it's it's like I said. You know, for one month a year, people pretend that they care, and then we cease to exist again. Especially if you're an autistic adult, because mm. let's not forget that the vast majority of people seem to think that you know, people stop being autistic when they hit 18, or at least that's how they act. 
And during that month, if they do listen to you, they don't really listen. They have already got their agenda and often will mm. edit your comments mm. to fit in with their narrative, I've often found. So it isn't actually listening to the voice of the community or what people have to say either. Yeah. Well, Ben and so, I have been in spaces where we've been basically representing ourselves um, as autistic people. And because it's a new space, we generally use the chat box and we don't speak uh, mouth words. And they, they either don't even bother to look at the chat or if they do read something out, it's paraphrased. It's not verbatim. It's not read as we put it. Yeah. If you don't want it read out, we won't put it there. Yeah, and Ben says it's the whole autism community versus autistic community. Yeah. It is. It's basically a month of sort of being in an intellectual war, isn't it? You know, mm -hmm. um, it's 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 a month of negativity versus i guess neutrality because i think most of us agree that being autistic isn't good or bad it 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 just it yeah. just is you know um it's it, just life it, it's yeah, yeah it's, um and i think that that leads us quite nicely on to why we had why Psy came up with the idea for autistic august because it's a month <clears throat> that conveniently starts with au um mm -hmm. which is nice i always like it when things line up like that um I mean, but also, roman person a long time ago but we're ignoring him <laughs> um but yeah you know um it's I've, in my mind, it's a month when we can celebrate our community mm. rather than try and justify its existence. Yeah. And the, the art, autism awareness as well. I mean, we've been saying for a, a long time, we don't want awareness, we've got awareness, we know we're going to exist. And, and we've got um, autistic, um, I've lost my words now. What was I going to say? What's the word they use now instead of awareness? All I can focus on acceptance. Acceptance. acceptance, yeah, but I still don't think that's enough because that's just yeah. putting up with us. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, we acknowledge that you're there. We'll do this little bit, but we want appreciation. Appreciate what we can do and what we do do. Yeah. And Ben said, why is April an awareness month? We are aware of autism and autistic people already now understand us and accommodate us and i think part of what is quite important about having um autistic august is that our voices are centered on it and it's not just about sort of acceptance or understanding it's about giving a platform for us as a community to sort of show the culture and the language and everything, the experience of being autistic, sort of, and not just focusing on educating people because we're people at the end of the day. And why can't we? It's like there's autistic writing, art, all of sort of these things that never get to be explored or shown. Mm. Exactly. We're a norm minority in a norm majority world, you know, and it's like my kids are adults now. Right. Um, and I went through the whole 98 Wakefield ugh, stuff. Sorry. His name actually makes me feel sad um, onwards. And I've seen so much improvement since then. And we've gone forward in so many ways since then, except for this. Right. Like and, and, and this would show the rest of I think the rest of society that, you know, we do have a voice, like you said, you know, we we do con contribute. You know, we do. There's arts, there's music. So there's so many reasons that we should have our own month. <clears throat> so. Yeah. Moving on, like we've just mentioned, 
you know, autistic culture and language and things like that. Does anyone care to weigh in? Because I feel like if we're going to talk about autistic August, let's take a chance to brag on our community a bit. So does anyone have anything they want to weigh in on autistic culture and language? Yeah, it's awesome. End of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> But it's true, you know, it, 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 but what, what upsets me is the fact that you have to look for people. Like it's not, I want it to be, being autistic is neutral, but we're allowed to have a pride about it. Do you know what I'm saying? So I don't, I want my, you know, my kids' kids to be able to know that, you know, yeah, this, this actor is autistic, this artist is autistic, and it's not even considered anything. It's a neutral thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. For me, personally, <clears throat> I think it means not having to wait until you go to university or you move out of your parents' house or if you are lucky enough to be able to do those things um, <clears throat> before you find people that are like you and then look back 20 years earlier and go, oh my God, they were there all along. Um, and everyone was hiding themselves. And one of the things I love about the Academy and one of the things, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me, I'm a bit ill at the moment. One of the things I love about this space is that we can come on with dyed hair, no hair, hair down to her ankles. We can come on with luck, we can like a buttered bit of toast. We can come on as a potato with headphones. We can come on, <clears throat> let's go as David, in a prison cell. <laughs> <laughs> as ourselves, as you know, I can shamelessly promote <laughs> things and, and we can all just be ourselves. Whereas I think, you know, we spent our personal professional lives and certainly in certain relationships as well, hiding all the things that actually when you come to the space, they're reveled and celebrated and and actively encouraged. And I think it's actually almost a sigh of relief to come into spaces like this and go, oh wait, all those things I've been told to hide all my life are actually celebrated here. It's not me. <laughs> you know, the things that I, now every time I come into these lives, I have my little octopus near me because it's become a thing now. Um, but I wouldn't do it in any other thing. And that's the, being able to celebrate, not weirdness as such, because it has been called weirdness for such a long time, but being able to celebrate us and being able to celebrate who we are, who we actually are as autistic people and not, Typical, yeah, and it's not just about the subject of autism. It is. You can come on and talk about um, your interests like every other person. You can talk. And why, why does it always have to be just focusing on that? And that's what I like also about Academy okay, and things that people and the podcasts that people can come on and talk about Star Trek or whatever and just show that interest and I just think it's really important. Absolutely. I mean that's what I was kind of getting to but I probably didn't make sense before which is I want it I want our community I want it so that be so that finding this kind of place like finding Academy um, is it unusual? Does that make sense? Like it, it, it's it's a normalized sort of thing. Like there's the community is acknowledged, accepted, and the younger generation isn't like we like you were saying before, um, growing up not knowing where their community is until they get of a certain age. I think August, I think August would bring that or help bring that. But as well, we could also structure it so we could showcase different things each week. So we could have like an art week, we could have a science week, we could have, where people are literally like, we could even have a week where it's just like, if you've got an obscure special interest that doesn't fit in one of these categories, we'd love to hear about it. <laughs> Do you do something like, you know, weird and, and like sort of things that don't really hear about every day? Come and talk to us about it. Even if you do, come and talk to us about it. And I think that's the thing is, is all those things we've been told to basically be quiet about all our lives. Mm. Come, come talk to us. We want to know things. And the best part is, is you know, you're talking to an audience that, even if they have no knowledge of the subject, they want to learn about it. So you're not you're not faced with that. Oh, am I, am I talking too much? Oh, I should be quiet. Um, you know, do I need to stop talking now? It's that. Oh no, please! I want to learn more about these things. Um, you know, one of the things my partner said to me about one of their special interests. Oh, you, you probably keep about hearing about these things. I was like, I am learning so much right now. I love it. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I mean, and even though I had no idea about it, she she loves sharing about it. I love talking. No, she I love hearing about it, and it works. And it's the same with Academy. It just it's just it just works. And I think that's what's been missing for a lot of autistic people is, is coming to a space where it just 
works and there's no extra effort involved it just it just works you know yeah and you don't have to apologize you exactly. can and i think so often in all the other spaces in you are apologizing almost for your existence and being who you are and i just think a month where you can actually just be authentic mm. would be quite liberating to be honest and this is the thing is that by claiming august you know it, it's a month of potential isn't it you know it's not like april where we all go well we all know what's coming this month mm. you know <laughs> you know it's 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 autistic august like i keep waving my hands around cause it makes me really excited um mm -hmm. yeah it's autistic august and that there is so many things we could do with a month that we have claimed for ourselves. You know, that, that there is so much that we can show people outside of what they think they know about autistic experience. And it would be nice to do it without having, you know, big names talk over us. Mm. <clears throat> and it lines up with Autscape. Um, Rachel says. Yeah. And Ben says, <laughs> I have so many plans for neurotypical awareness November. No, I mean November. <laughs> no, I mean November. <laughs> I quite like that, yeah. But, um, Yeah, like there is there is so much you could do with a month, isn't there? You know, like uh, I like that idea of you know have like a arts week, a science week, a, I don't know, a music week. There, there's just so many things that autistic people are doing that people mm -hmm. need to know about. Yeah, like, we could we could plan even like um, autistic festivals. You know what I mean? Like autistic pride festivals. They could be incorporated in that that month as well be a total celebration generally hold them in june in the uk because i've just been to yeah. one in london yeah um, but so, but saying that i say we um i used to run the um student groups at uni for autistic students um um one of the best things i ever did or we we did as a, as a group was just we had one of the weekly socials and then like a couple of guys in the in the interior department just brought in like a lot of drones it was just like oh i guess we're doing a drone social and it was like drones that they all built and i was like how many people can you say you go to a social with that just bring in a bunch of drones that they just hand built and then we're flying around the common room <laughs> who does that like that's what we could do with autistic august do you know what i mean like we could yeah. showcase the talent that people have that are you know oh because they don't look in you in the eye or because they don't talk a certain way that they you know they kind of those things kind of go unnoticed and they go hidden and actually i'd love a drone week <laughs> <laughs> you know, so similar things, you know. But it doesn't just have to be those with the talents or anything like that. It's yeah. just an opportunity for connection for anyone, basically. Um, and I, I think, think you, I believe, yeah, you're right. Because so many sort of voice, so many people get missed, I think. And there's a deeper level to it, isn't it? Because by by showing people the everyday lives of autistic experience, um, it helps to depathologize our existence. You know, one of my greatest frustrations is that we live in a world that says we need to be diagnosed as autistic. When I'm like, but it's not a medical thing. So why die? Why I, I get why in the sense that to access supports and things like that we need the diagnosis in place often but you know it it's that's not really a medical thing. But that's really sorry but that's that's a really important point david like people shouldn't have to have a medical diagnosis to get those mm. support that they need and, the, and it's, it's, it's even uh, one of the things I actually said to the clients the other week was that when you actually break this down, when you ever start advocating for just people, you realise you're not all advocating for one person. You're advocating for the community, and it's systematic, you know? Um, it, it entirely is. So the fact that we even have to have a little doctor's note saying, give me the accommodations I need to function as a human being without my mental or physical health derailing itself, mm -hmm. and not just have that given as a standard, it's a problem. 
You know, and that just doesn't extend just to autistic people. That extends to anyone with disability, anyone who's different, anyone who doesn't fit the standard model. You know, we shouldn't have to have a doctor's note to be like. Fact, you know, I, I believe, believe we need to have that badge. I mean, they believe we need to have that badge so we can be able to access support mm. if we don't have that badge then we're, we're obviously not valid we, mm. we don't have, we don't accept I that often, we I often feel that we're held to a higher standard um, yes. often and it we're not so when you have all these people coming into your lives and things and they come in with all their interventions and their ideas. Do they do any of these things? Mm -hmm. I mean, probably not, no. And they bring all this in. So can we just not normalize? Can they just not stop with the interventions? And something like Autistic August would actually show our realities and show, show us as people. And I think that is just so often forgotten that we're mm. actually people and we're individuals as well. I mean, some of us are potatoes and toast, for sure. <laughs> I love the wide mm. eyes. Exactly. Normalised potato and toast. <laughs> Ours is not an exclusionary community. All carbohydrates are welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Especially carbohydrates, because it's cheese, yeah. <laughs> I did have a thing to say, and I've completely forgotten it. <laughs> I'll just ramble for a bit then until you remember. Um, <clears throat> but th this is the thing, isn't it? Like, we deserve a month when we can showcase our collective humanity and, mm -hmm. like, celebrate our collective humanity because yeah you know we're often wildly different to those that we'll be celebrating in normy november yes. but um, but uh it's okay to be different like why is society so caught up on the whole idea that there is this normal like it, it makes no sense to me and maybe that's because I'm not normal, but I think it just scares them. That I think so we have, instead of a normie November, a where's where's the normie? <laughs> it's like where's Waldo? But like, go on, find in everyone's like one month a year, go and find somebody who's normal. Go on. If you if you find them, you get a reward. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to know what the gold standard of normal is. So someone yeah. please go find it. Ben says, give all the neurodivergents a massive net to catch them in. We <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, could, nice, um, could have like a nice spy book. It could be yeah, like one. Catch them in a box, surely. Put them. all the NTs in a box. <laughs> there was some research done. I can't remember who, who did it, but like big, like, I don't know, university type thing where they basically said there is no normal. Like normal does not exist. But yet I look at neurotypical people and I wonder. <laughs> See, I like um, Nick Walker's book, Neuroqueer Heresies. And in it, she talks yeah. about the fact that, um, you know, neurotypicality is a performance. Like, And if you can perform to a neurotypical standard, then you're considered normal. But if, if you can't comfortably give the neurotypical performance, then you are neurodivergent, um, you know? And I, I kind of like that idea because what it says to me is that actually this whole idea of normal and typical and things like that, it, it, it's just a, it's an ideal that society created. And in my opinion, Ooh. that ideal is largely based on whether or not a person is going to be a good profit machine. Um, I would say profit is also how well they can be controlled. So, for example, a lot of a lot yeah. of the social norms that autistic people uh, struggle uh, or you know conceive to a struggle with are actually when you break them down and just like how do you politely lie to somebody <laughs> in a really really roundabout way? <laughs> and it's like actually, why don't you just tell them that I'm not interested or I don't want to do that? 
or that's not for me. Uh, rather than going, oh, well, I, I would love to, but you know, Sharon's birthday party next Saturday, rah, 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 rah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then it, mm. it actually break down a lot of the social rules that autistic people are seem, seemingly don't get. When you break them down, when someone sits down and explains them to you, you're like, oh, so you're just, you're, you're teaching you how to lie in a really, really complicated way. Okay, yeah. got it, got it, wonderful. And it's like, but actually, how much time and energy could you save <laughs> just being direct? And and you don't have to, and this I think this is the most conception among uh, non-autistic people is that being blunt is rude or being direct is to be seen as being rude. And it's like, actually, it, from our, uh, certainly from my perspective and, and where I'm coming from, and in my experiences, being direct has saved so much time. It's, it's upset some people, sure, but it's definitely saved a lot of time and energy in terms of, oh, oh, you meant this. Oh, we could just said that. Mm. Rather than trying yeah. to spend 20 years going back and forth for a simple misunderstanding that didn't need to happen. Yeah, I just think we're just more efficient communicators. Thank you. I mean, I'm not going to weigh in there because I have my own... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I mean, I grew up. I grew up in in in, in the in, in in the states, and there was this ideal of happy families, and like you knew things were going on, and say a family. But when all the family got together, everybody pretended that everything was all right, and I could never understand that. Like, I literally would just go to my mom and go, "Why you don't like this person? So why are they here?" You know, and, and used to get, you know, told that I was too direct, too blunt, blah, 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 blah. I just saw it as facts. And I I've, think that's I've, what it comes down to. It is fact that putting all these norms and these social norms change over time. So what now is considered normal or the rule will change. And I think to a lot of us, it's just it doesn't make sense. And if it did, we would go with it. It's not fact, it's just more fluid. Yeah. <clears throat> but um I completely forgot what I was gonna say. I'm gonna be honest here. I had a really good point, and as I went to say it, <laughs> my brain just went, No, no, we're not going with that. I was going to say this, and then I forgot it, because let's be honest, how, how often in a day do that happen for autistic people, neurodivergent people? Oh, and never mind. <laughs> you can't say it straight away, that's it, it's gone. <laughs> yeah, we, we really are showcasing the normal lives of autistic people tonight, <laughs> with the uh, with the straight. sort of just sitting here for a few seconds, like, uh... Straight after, <laughs> we are effective communicators. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I retract that statement. <laughs> maybe, maybe that a wasn't word. a fact at all. Maybe, maybe a better word would be uh, we are economical communicators. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> We're just factual, you know. I don't understand the BS. I don't understand the fluff. Like, I don't. Why, why do it? it just It seems so inefficient. <laughs> It just seems like a waste of time. Yeah. It starts from a very young age, though. Children are taught to just not be truthful. They, they have to skirt around things. And mm -hmm. like when we simply ask how you are and things like that, you, you don't, you're you not supposed to give an actual answer. There's some mm. hidden rules where you just say, I'm fine, yes. Mm. The thing that yeah, weirds me out is that, yeah, the thing that weirds me out is that, especially when you're a child, whether you're autistic or otherwise neurodivergent in another way or ne neurotypical, um, you know, you're not actually taught to be an autonomous creature, are you? Because everything is like, give grandma a hug. I don't care if you don't want to, go give grandma a hug. Like, uh, don't speak your mind about the weird clothing that that person is wearing, even though Ooh. it's like covered in, I don't know. Love when I was a kid, one of the things I used to do a lot was like, if I saw someone wearing a really weird mix of colours and it hurt my eyes, I would say it's a weird mix of colours and it hurts my eyes. And then people would be like, David, that's really rude. And I was like, yeah, but it hurts my eyes. It's, David, it's I don't know it's that way. Like, those yeah. colours don't go together. Like yeah. I had, I had all sorts of strange rules in my head about what went together and what didn't. But I really couldn't get on when there was rules or like my parents would tell me to do something or that I couldn't do something. I'd be like, why? Because I told you so. 
Yeah, no. Because I said so. Like, no. Yeah, but why? That's not giving me the information that I can deal with. Just telling me no. I said, no, you can't do that. Oh, you should do this. You should do that. That's not explaining to me. How am I supposed to work with that? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and I was just going to say, I brought my kids up. I, I, I decided when they were young that I didn't, I, 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 I don't know if it was just determination or whatever, but I was going to bring mine up radically different to the way I was brought up. So if, 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 if you know, grandma wanted a hug and my kid didn't want to, I said, they don't want to. It's, it's that simple, you know, I, because autonomy was important because I grew up not having it in any way, freaking shape or form. So it, I was determined that my kids would not be controlled by me or anybody right. else. Sorry, Bobby, just to add on to that, I think, because I fall into a slightly different category in that um, I try, I was tried to, so people tried to control me, didn't work <laughs> in their favor. And so I was a troublemaker. Um, I was, I was. Uh, deviant. I was. I was um, not a bad kid as such, but someone who definitely had problems following the rules. Or it very much, you know, well, it's one rule for you and one rule for everybody else. I was like, well, isn't that what you teach us? <laughs> <laughs> um, but you, you kind of either get forced into absolute compliance and sort of, you know, like you say, you had no autonomy, or you fight for that autonomy and yeah, does some damage. <laughs> Put it yeah. um, Do you yeah. know what I mean? You kind of, you know, Absolutely. You know, Fuck. Absolutely. That, I mean, that was my teenage years. Absolutely was the fighting back. Mm. And I ended up leaving home at 16 as a result. So, you know what I mean? So I, I just, when I finally had my kids, I was like, mm, we're just going to do this a l like really differently, you know? And, and, and I'm grateful for it because, you know, they're, they're adults and they're doing well. So, you know, proud of them, you know, but it makes a difference. They didn't leave home. One's 25, going to be 24 and one's 21. They're still here. <laughs> Everybody says to me, well, you did well. I'm like, yeah, but when are they going to leave? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I like Liana's com comment here. It's simple. Just don't be any of the orts. Autonomous, authentic, autistic. Like, you know, kind of is like that, isn't it? <laughs> it's just don't be authentic, isn't it? Because Is so it? much of everyday life isn't authentic. Mm. That's so true. Um, so I think there was, a, there was a question for yeah. Rachel, wasn't there? Yeah. Um, yeah. Which I think. Rachel was going to answer. Here we go. Yeah. Um, I, I've been debating about this because there's two answers I can give to this. It's my professional opinion and my personal opinion. Uh, very different. <laughs> um, my, my personal opinion on it is, yeah, they do that so they can control the conversation. They want you to speak their language because they don't want to know that you can't. So it's a way of controlling you because if you've got a valid point and they'd much rather not address that and go, what's well, your tone? I would love to listen. I'd love to be listened. I'd love to be educated by you, but your tone is off. So I, I can't listen to anything you're saying. Um, it's a control tactic. Um, point blank. And then you, you go, oh God, my tone must be, yes, I'll fix that. And so then you spend your energy on the tone and not the point you were trying to get across. Um, my professional opinion is that there are reasons for that. <laughs> um, different language structures, different language um, processing. Um, but uh, for notable people in my understanding of it, um, tone very much makes up part of how they process language. Um, so as I've talked about in many videos and presentations, autistic language structures uh, hypothetically are at word level. So when it's word level, it's bound by the words. For neurotypical people, it's bound by the non-words. So it's all the stuff that isn't the words. So tone, body language, context, all that non-verbal stuff, um, which we know autistic people struggle with. Um, so in, 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 a, in a kind of middle ground answer, it's partly controlled, partly language structures. It depends on who you're dealing with and who you're talking to. Like it, it, if someone's deliberately trying to miss the point, if, does that make sense? Like if you, you've ever engaged in a conversation where you know someone's trying to miss the point and it's for control purposes because they're trying not to listen to you and trying to shoot down anything you're saying. Uh, in mm -hmm. other cases, it could be genuinely, they've kind of gone on defensive because you something in a way that you've received, whether that is or not the case you put it there, they've received that to be 
a, an attack of sorts, whether it was meant as one or not, um, in which case, but then I find some people, even if you say it wasn't meant as an attack, the intent, there wasn't any nasty intent that people would still take that on and go, well, I don't care what you say, I'm going to take, I'm going to assume misintent, um, which I think isn't helpful. Um, but I think we see that a lot with autistic behaviours and, and um, like expressions is that like, we say we do something because we're autistic or we say we do something because it hurts or whatever. And it's like, but does it really? And it's yeah. that invalidation. So, you know, oh, I didn't mean that. But did you really not mean that? Because it, the way you came across sounded like, and it's like, but even if I'm telling you point blank, that's not what I meant or not how it, I'm meant to come across, there's mm -hmm. a point blank refusal to accept that. So it's like, what do you go from, where do you go from there? If a person refusing to accept that, then walk away. Because <laughs> you're not going to, you know, I've said this many, many times, you're not going to convince someone who doesn't want to be convinced. Mm. I don't know when to walk away because you're just wasting the time otherwise. I, I think that, you're... Sorry, Sai, you go first. I've been, yeah, I find that as a late diagnosed autistic person, I'm still finding myself having or uh, needing like an internal need to explain that this mm. is not an attack and I'm not you know, accusing anyone of anything. I'm just explaining my thoughts and feelings. Mm -hmm. but I know it's basically a trauma response of being um, accused of certain things in the past by people being, oh, yeah, basically my mum. <laughs> I was accused of making things up and doing things yeah. for attention. Yes. Yeah, that's, 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 one of the examples I, that I use in my talks is um, with my mum when she was like, get out of my sight. And I walked behind, go outside the kitchen, in front of the kitchen window. And then I realised that I could really <laughs> box immediately um, and got called facetious because I was being facetious. And I was like, no, I was, yes, I was always getting that. Stop being facetious. <laughs> mm -hmm. I literally just stuck right under the kitchen window. Um, so I, you know, but I, I can, you know, I see, I see your point, and you know, it, it speaks to very real trauma that autistic people face. Because you know, some of this is light-hearted. Okay, I've got good facetious, but for some people, it costs them their job, it costs them their home, it costs them their education. <laughs> you know, um, you know, some people can end up in prison over it. It's, it's awful. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've nothing to compare to that except for the fact of, you know, not being believed when you're young. Like I've, obviously, it was the way I communicated with my parents. But I have Eller Sanlos. And I and it wasn't I wasn't diagnosed until I was in my 30s. You know, so um years and years of, of trying to explain, but I I definitely found out late diagnosed as well that I deal with alexithymia. So I know for a fact that I wasn't explaining myself properly because I see it in my ch children as well. The same sort of inability to sort of express that emotion, but being hyper empathetic at the same time, you know. So it, it can be um, definitely challenging, definitely challenging, you know, when you're dealing with um, neurotypical people or non-autistic or non-neurodivergent people um, and not being believed. So it resonates totally what you were saying, Sai. I've, I've recently discovered that as well as dyslexic, um, very likely dysgraphic as well. It's not quite what I thought it was. But um, yeah, I thought dysgraphic was literally the physical aspect of writing and but it's more the getting the, the words out properly and that's yes. what i really struggle with i use the wrong words even in writing i will i know the thoughts and feelings in my head but i will use maybe a word that is slightly right but it will be misconstrued because it's yes. not exactly perfect yeah. and at, at that moment that's why i take so long to write things because I'm constantly changing it because mm. I will look back at it and I think, no, that's totally wrong, so I'll need to change this. But when you're literally using mouth words and speaking to people or you're writing a quick text, that can very easily be misinterpreted. Yeah. yeah, I sometimes think that the way that the language is constructed, it isn't actually reflective of our experience. It isn't a natural way of communicating for us often. And I think there are so many different ways to express and communicate authentically, which we haven't had the opportunity to explore. Mm -hmm. And I think often that is where a lot of the difficulties in communication come from, because it's just not 
a natural way for us as it is sort of a neurotypical way of language and I think this is where you have these cultural differences because other cultures have their own language um regional you look at regional differences and all of this and it's got to have an impact it just hasn't been explored or known about and I think this is where it's important that autistic people do have that platform are an, and as are in, leading the research and things like that and there are things like autistic april so that this becomes more the norm and is more known about and uh i mean taking us back a bit what rachel was saying about like the whole controlling the conversation with with you know well you should be using this tone and if you don't use this tone i'm basically not going to understand what you're saying that that whole idea of controlling the conversation um i think it it fits really neatly into what we've been saying about april in general doesn't it because april is basically a month of it's autistic autism awareness month go celebrate being autistic but not like that um mm -hmm. you know and mm -hmm. uh, you know i think if if nothing else i think tonight we've kind of touched on some of the stuff that actually we we'd like to see discussed during a month where we have the microphone and not someone else. Um, because as we said earlier, we're, we're people, <laughs> you know, um, and we don't often get treated like people by society at large. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Some of us are toast and potatoes, but, um, but, Toast and potatoes are people too. Um, <laughs> it's going to make my breakfast very confusing tomorrow morning. That I know. All carbs know matter. People. All carbs matter. <laughs> and Ben says you will know we have made pro we have made progress when you see a potato in number ten. I think that's yeah. got to be an improvement on what we currently have, or anything. I think you're more likely to see it number two. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I keep laughing because I keep seeing Ben's comments about him. <laughs> but there we go again. Humour. How much exactly. of that comes through? Yeah, yeah. no. In, I... in April. How much is... I mean, the whole criteria is based on we lack sense of humour, these things. And it's just like, come on. <laughs> it's far from the mm -hmm. truth. Yeah. Autistic people aren't funny, people aren't funny. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> tell, tell Hannah Gadsby that. Sorry. If, it, if anyone feel any better, it's actually written in my diagnostic notes on my paperwork that my mum wrote, that wrote down, my jokes, my jokes are not funny. So... Oh, no. <laughs> That's actually written on medical paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> no, in, in my experience, autistic people are the funniest people I know. Like, yes. Like, Maybe it's because I'm also an autistic people, um, but <laughs> but um, I don't understand humour. Like uh, to me, look, well, one neurotypical humour. Like you know, like so much neurotypical humour seems to be at someone else's expense. Like um, whereas you know, I, I think of you know one of my closest friends in the world, Jay. He. Um, I mean, like ninety percent of his jokes are absolute nonsense, but they're hilarious. You know, <laughs> like you know, it, it's it, it's it's nice to be surrounded by uh, other autistic people from time to time, or in my experience, all the time, because I don't mm. actually know any neurotypical people too well. I'm trying to think. <laughs> I can't think of any examples of neurotypical people that spend a lot of time in my life <laughs> like, um but for me it's like those those romantic comedies or comedies like i i can't stand those films like they don't make sense to me i know what's gonna happen way before and i don't understand how these people can sit through that and it's like cringy to me you know what i mean 
I don't understand it at all. I definitely find autistic people well funnier or more funny, whatever it is. No, if I uh, if I'm gonna watch comedy, it has to be really obscure comedy. Yes, like really yes. obscure comedy. <laughs> yeah, for me it's old, so it's like, um, um, oh my gosh, oh, he's a very naughty boy. I can't think of the name of the movie. Oh, oh Life of Brian. 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 That to me is hysterical. Like, you know what I mean? It's, it's and 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 I was born on that. Boy. Yeah. That's Technically a sci-fi because there's aliens in it. There you go. <coughs> yeah. Sci-fi, every Star Trek movie as well. Yeah, I definitely have like a genre. <laughs> Thanks, Bobby, because now I've just got Monty Python quotes going off in my See, head. I, I, so, so do I. Like, you're just running. <laughs> I think a good example of my sort of humour is... Um, there's this scene in a in a show I watch. It's an American sitcom called New Girl, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, one of the characters he goes he's talking about when to say I love you to a girl, and he goes, <clears throat> you know, I just say it as soon as possible or something to that effect. And then it cuts to a scene of he's sat in a first date and he just goes I love you, screams it across the table. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God, I've got to see that now. But I think I, I think we find it funny because I think at some point we can all relate to those weird moments or those those kind of like oh moments of just blurting something out and be like oh wait hold on no. <laughs> you know so I think we can all relate to that kind of weird. one of my one of my best moments was watching Harry Gatsby um, when she literally describes how you're going to react to her comedy set. And exactly what she's gonna do. And then there are moments you're watching you go, Oh, she said she was gonna do it, and then you're like crying twice as hard with laughter than you thought. And I've never actually seen the comedy show, even though you didn't know what was coming, that yeah. funny, even when I knew what was coming, because it was like autistic person knows what's coming. Yay, okay. So I won't find this funny because I know what's coming, and yet somehow I found it ten times as funny <laughs> the comedy, because I was because like that bit where she's like, see, I'm not gonna tell I'm gonna tell you it's a letter. And you're going to be like, that, that bit where she's like, and then you're going to laugh, and then you're going to remember that part, and then you're going to laugh again. And I was, and then we got that part, and I was like, oh, I remembered that part, and you absolutely lost it. I thought that was the, the, the level of genius kind of embed that yeah. into a comedy show is yes. unparalleled, <laughs> quite frankly. Yeah, I, I'm a massive, massive fan. Like anybody who knows me, I, I have gifts, all of her, just to send to people. Yeah. I love her. I'm reading her book, and I'm doing it, reading it, and doing it audio as well. And it's, that's what I'm saying. It's people like her that need to be sort of freaking highlighted because she's hysterical. The you know? Pack of Douglas at the dog park. Yes. <laughs> at the dog park. <laughs> oh, I love that. But that, that's the oh, kind of thing, isn't it? Is, is being able, and then I think it's, it's even it's even cooler now because autistic people are then quoting other autistic yeah. people. And it's now become like a little echolalic thing, which I absolutely love. Because honestly, when I do something like that, I'm like, in the dog park! <laughs> I can do it with an accent. <laughs> I make, the, make my friends watch the Netflix show when I was over in the States. And I'm, I'm literally, they're looking at me as I'm mouthing every freaking word. I've seen it so many times. Sorry, we're so going off tangent. But yes, massive fan. Massive fan. No, but... Actually, I, I do have to add on the echolalia front, um, there is a, uh, uh, the, the comedian who um, sadly passed away last year, Sean Locke. Um, I can't ever since I, I, yeah, um, ever since I uh, saw that children's book thing he did, and at the end of it, he goes, and they all drank lemonade. Like, I, uh, no, it wasn't Sean Locke. It was from Black Books. That was it. Oh, okay. They wrote a children's okay. book. Yeah, I'm, this is my brain just going <laughs> off. Um, yeah, in black books, there's a bit where they've written a children's book and they end it on, and they all drank lemonade, and now I can't tell a story to someone without ending it with, and they all <laughs> drank lemonade. <laughs> yes. Okay, serious, serious vote, guys. I think we need to have a um, Tangent Tuesday. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we, need, we need a Tangent Tuesday live. <laughs> Yeah, you got a tangent? Come on, talk about it. Yeah, but do you know what? You know, for... for... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, but... Um, 
for Autistic August, we wanted to showcase autistic people as them real as their real selves. I think we've done that tonight. <laughs> well, um, best better yet. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just thinking better yet. Yeah. And in Chile, you know the whole the games where I went to the store and bought milk, and the next person has to go do that. But everyone has an ecclesi thing. Yours is the lemonade thing, and then in the dog park, and everyone just has their own little repetition thing on the end. So we've got a stream of all the ecclesi for the ecclesi thing. <laughs> I couldn't do mine live because mine is when she turns and goes F off. <laughs> it's my favorite. Just the way she says it. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> oh. Anyway, um, we should probably think about wrapping up because at this point we're just going off on tangent after tangent. And it's not even Tangent Tuesday. No. It can stay on till Tuesday. <laughs> it probably will go on till Tuesday, yeah. Anyway, you heard it here first. Size idea, Autistic August. Go out and tell everyone about it. And, uh, yeah, you know, like, let us know in the comments or something. I don't know how you do this. Let us know in the comments <laughs> if you want to see Tangent Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> There's there's a there's there's magic words you have to use to up engagement apparently on Facebook, um, but seriously, if you want to see Tangent Tuesday, tell us because I, I think that's an awesome idea. <laughs> what does what's Tangent? What's that? Can we do one for the day of the week? Have frivolous we'll Friday. Live every day of the week. Yeah. yeah. I was just thinking of Fong's Thursday. What did you find? Oh, no. Today? Just no, Ben. Oh, oh, my God. Hey, that was a thing. I'm, yeah, I no, won't be around for Thursday, I'm afraid. <laughs> haven't come up. No. Definitely not, Ben. <laughs> I mean, it works for me by now. <laughs> Oh, but we're not funny, remember? <laughs> oh, funny Fridays. Everyone tell a joke. Uh, tell a joke. Oh, no, I can't. I don't do jokes. I can't. Hang on, I hang always on. mess them up. Totally destroy them. I can't remember them. Never mind. What is it about when someone tells you to tell a joke, your brain goes, I have never heard a joke in my life. <laughs> <laughs> what is a joke? <laughs> my brain just goes, no. <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's definitely a demand avoidance thing for me because it literally blank gone no can't yeah. do that the only time I'm not funny is when someone asks me to be funny yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's yeah, you're not doing something funny, funny anyway by avoiding the question Would you tell a joke <laughs> oh no oh my god <laughs> Is Monday not bad enough without that? <laughs> okay, so um, Ben, ben is on a bad from naming the days of the week. Um. <laughs> Diarrhea is hereditary, it runs in your genes. <laughs> oh no, just just stop. What do you mean? From the first one. Okay. I used to be addicted to soap, but I'm clean now. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there's a reason why we're not allowed an entire month. <laughs> my <Viagra. laughs> I think we my Viagra. Is so my Viagra oh, is the hardest time in my life. Oh no. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> okay. Uh <laughs> Let's, uh, <laughs> let's wrap this up. I'm going to go around and ask everyone what their favourite slash new stim is, okay? Ben. <laughs> Good choice of words. Swear words. <laughs> okay. Valid choice. Uh, Bobby, what's your favourite slash new stim? 
I've been doing it the entire time we've been talking. You've probably heard me snapping it. It's like this um, putty that changes color. Um, you can pull it and you can pull it again. And it's very fun and it keeps my hands busy. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Sai, what is your favorite slash new stim? No. Just being anxious. That seems to keep me alive at the moment. <laughs> I am fueled by anxiety. <laughs> Feel that. Uh, Victoria. I don't have a new favorite stim. <laughs> just name any stim. Oh, don't. This will just, my brain will go blank and it'll be a total demand and it won't happen. <laughs> there you go. There what you if go. you don't tell us your new favourite stim? No, that doesn't work either. Reverse psychology just doesn't happen. No, it's the normal, boring, squishy things. Never boring. Not, not boring. That is not a boring squishy. It's not boring. <clears throat> that is an awesome squishy. Rachel. Um, several. You can't see them. I have a background. I have, like... LED backlights in the back of my computer, um, which are just really fun to look at when I'm doing stuff on the computer. Um, and I'd probably have to say, because it's so hot, just spraying myself with water, even if I'm cold, <laughs> in front of a fan. It just, it's just like become a routine now, like left foot, right foot, left leg, right leg, left arm, right arm, right arm. <laughs> so, it's just so. the yorkie -cokey. Um Yeah, <laughs> it's, <even> cold. <laughs> it's the cold yoki. Everybody See, in my, my house has had a spray to do that. Same thing. Mine, um, mine is a very specific way I set my room up. So I have a, a star projector and like a oil diffuser slash vaporizer. So I turn on the star projector, turn the lights off, put music on, and then start the oil diffuser up so everything smells nice. And then I just exist in sensory bliss for an hour. Wow. That's, that's my... Right. Sorry? Get sensory scent. Don't actually Google sensory scent. They'll cost you like 10 times the amount. If you go and get a blackout port of toilet, port of toilet tent thing, you can literally have your own sensory tent in your house. So you can literally have things wow. in your building. You can literally just go in your own tent and it's like, mm, zip down. I can't see or hear the world. It's great. This sounds awesome. I'm going to look into this. Seriously, <laughs> or Amazon, just type in port of potty toilet tent. Um, and they're honestly, they're, I mean, they're pretty big, but they'll cost you about 20 quid compared to an autism sensory tent, which would cost you about 100. Mm. Um, mm. so it's the same, it's just called a different thing. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna go look at this now. Yeah. Nice. It's really good for blackout in the summer when you can't, like, because it's really light, light outside. It's really good for having blackout space if you run sensory lights on and stuff like that. Wow. <clears throat> okay, now I'm looking into it too. Yes. Um, and the final question, of course, is what is our favorite form of potato? I'm going to jump straight in here and say it's it's Ben. Ben. <laughs> ben. Wrong way. Ben. <laughs> no, not saying it. <laughs> no, but I think the potato's flirting with us. <laughs> <laughs> I think the better potato is trying to be intimidating person. Nope, close that mouth now. <laughs> <laughs> Just no. Smashed potato. Good choice. <laughs> Toast is the new potato. Yes. <laughs> Oh, now I feel right. guilty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fun fact of Friday, the world's smallest wasp is smaller than an amoeba. Whoa. That's, um, I hope they're uh, significantly less allergic -y than the ones that have stung oh. me in the past. Yeah. Because um, the thought of... Out there somewhere there's an amoeba the size of a wasp. <clears throat> <laughs> Oh, no. that is the flip side, isn't it? Right, 
we're all getting inertia, so let's uh, let's smile and wave whilst we wait for the outro to play. Awkward <laughs> waves. Thank you for joining our chaos tonight. <laughs> Wow, wow, wow.